Hello, Parasites. This is Ben Pronsky. I'm the voice of Eddie Brock and Venom in Marvel Spider-Man Maximum Venom. And you're watching the Venom Vlog. Enjoy. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about Maximum Venom episode four, which I believe is called Spider-Man Unmasked. And, uh, and this episode, I gotta say, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna have a lot more negative critiques of this episode than I have had on the series so far. And I, I see the comments, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're leaning on the show because you, you kind of befriended the people who watch it and stuff like that. And you know what, maybe there's uh, on some level, on a subconscious level, maybe there's some truth to that, but I always feel like I give my honest opinions about things. And yes, I do like Kevin Burke and Chris Doc Wyatt. They're amazing dudes and they provided us with some really cool stuff for this channel, which is not just interviews with them, but J.M. Demetrius and also uh, Ben Pronsky. And it's been awesome. Like they're just really awesome dudes and I wish them well in all of their endeavors in writing. And I think they're talented guys and I really love talking to them when we did our interview together. And I like where their headspace is at, where they're like, all right, well, we got to try to do new things. We got to kind of approach things from this angle. And we look at, you know, the history of Spider-Man and cartoons and what has been done. And we try to do things different, not to just to subvert expectations or anything, but because they want to bring something new to the, the palette of telling stories about symbiotes or Craven the Hunter or any other characters, Doc Ock, and they want to do things. And then they also want to maybe translate some comics that have not been translated into animation because they came out after, you know, the previous animated stuff before. So I like these guys. They're awesome. They're very cool. And I have a lot of respect for them. And I have a lot of respect for the people they hire to come in and work on these shows for them. And they get top-notch talent, uh, for sure. But when I, as a fan then, so it's like, okay, great. As, as someone who respects them and who, so, who you know, talks to them and, and, is, and they're very nice to me and everything. It's like, you know, and I love supporting them and I always will support them. Whatever shows they do next, I'll, I will be there. I'll be their number one fan. Uh, but I will always still be honest with you guys about how I feel. And I genuinely liked episode one and three of Maximum Venom. And two, I had some criticisms of, because as we know, it wasn't really about symbiotes, but I felt the purpose of episode two was to set up Peter as a leader. And it was, you know, defining him and showing him become the leader of, you know, this group of, you know, either it's super people or spider people. And so that way that sets him up for the third episode where he had to almost single-handedly, luckily with the help of, you know, Moon Knight and a couple other people and Aunt May, save the world and save New York City. And that's because he led them, you know, and he, he used his instincts and, and that leadership instincts he was developing um, and that further developed in episode two. So I saw a point to the second episode as far as like, okay, this is how it fits into the overall season. This episode is the one where I don't understand where it fits in. I mean, I could take some guesses. You know, obviously, Doc Connors, he's like a big part of this episode. And we're going to get into spoilers for this episode. So you haven't seen episode four yet of Maximum Venom. You know, turn away now. Go watch it. Um, you know, I know I saw people online. Uh, someone even asked me, can you upload the video? I'm not ever going to do that. Um, you will never see me upload full videos of a Disney cartoon or a movie or anything like that. That would destroy my channel um, and not only would it do that but it's also wrong to do that so I don't support it you know and so uh, I would say if you can't watch this thing live if you can't watch it through the app if you can't you know watch it through Hulu I, I don't know what else to tell you I'm sure there are people out there that do upload you know things uh, from it maybe sit scenes and clips here and there I'm sure that happens so you know you could try to track that down if you want but you know, it, it does suck. I will say that's one of my biggest negatives about this show is that it's so hard to watch unless you have cable. Um, and I, so I agree. I, I understand the frustrations and, 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 you know, the reason why you asked me like, hey, can you upload? But I don't have a copy of the episode to upload anywhere. <laughs> like there's no way for me to get a copy of it. And even if I did have one, I'm not going to upload the full thing unedited on here because uh, that would that would be awful to, you know, that, that's taken views and hits away from the people who worked really hard on the show and they need those views and clicks and hits. Um, the downside is, is that there's only like a few channels to where you can literally, you know, watch this show honestly 
And that's that's a bummer. I think that kind of hurts the show a little bit. I wish they would just put new episodes up on Disney Plus. Also, um, Hulu. I think you have to have cable and hooked it. You know, like you have. To, I had to hook Hulu through cable and stuff like that to watch it. Um, that was a big, you know, kind of a frustrating thing because that's an extra fifty four dollars a month I have to pay. Um, you know, now to uh, to watch uh, one show on on TV, and it's uh, it's a bummer. And I I don't know if it's worth it. Even if I loved every aspect of this show, I still think fifty four dollars is a lot of money to ask. Um, but anyway, like I, I want to review them. I want, you know, I had trouble watching the first two episodes or the first episode I, I watched easily because it was on the app, but the second episode I had a lot of trouble getting to, so I didn't want any more problems with it. So three and four I've been watching through Hulu. And, uh, and so now that we've said all that, yeah, I get your frustration. I understand. But, um, this episode, like I said, Dr. Kirk Connors is in this. He's, uh, you know, he's the kind of the villain in a way, like he, he's, there's a hearing for Max Modell and that was my... I gotta say right off the bat, uh, for negatives, this is just not my thing. It's 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 kind of dumb to do a, a hearing for Max Modell. The whole thing of this is that Max Modell obviously had a part to play in the symbiote, you know, the 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 V two fifty two, whatever they called it, um, and then he also is like you know had the seed and he was preserving the seed that ended up you know is what Venom used to call the symbiote army to Earth. So I get from a writer standpoint, a creative standpoint, you're like, we have to address this. We have this guy who's the the main teacher, the head, you know, uh, teacher, principal of this elite school that all these teenage superheroes happen to work at, and uh, and you know, and he knows Peter is Spider Man and and all this stuff, and he's kind of putting these kids in danger, and so we have to address that, especially after the you know New York gets invaded by aliens. Uh, kind of because of his fault a little bit, although it was Dr. Kirk Connors who broke into his lab and released the seed and the, and the fraction of the symbiote he had. But, and Dr. Connors takes no accountability for that. He's like, I, I, I suspected you were up to something fishy. So he's in the court, or not court, it's like a hearing at the school. And they have like these board members from the school and you have um, Miles with uh, Gwen and Anya and they have uh, you know Max Modell and they're kind of defending him or being like uh, character witnesses for this hearing. And then you have Kirk Connors, who's like, I was brought into the school to, you know, to shape it up and all this other stuff. And I suspected him of doing some wrongdoing. Turns out he was, I went into his lab, something broke out and it got a hold of me. It was a symbiote. He doesn't admit that he actually tried to break the symbiote out. He just says it happened coincidentally, uh, which I think is weird that there should be cameras around that school, but I guess Max was trying to keep that lab secret. So it makes sense that there's no cameras in there. So. Dumb on you, Max, because now you don't have evidence to show that Kirk Connors is uh, a bad guy. Um, so Connors is like doing that thing. Or maybe he's not a, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do with him. Because uh, maybe he is just someone who's just just going a little too far in caring for, for people, you know, and uh, willing to hurt people to, to get, you know, to a position of power or something. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I think he's working for somebody. And I think that somebody put him at Horizon Labs. And I think that you know, or Horizon School, or whatever it's called. He's probably the only thing in this episode that links it to the other episodes. And that's assuming episode five and six are going to be about symbiotes. I really hope they are. I hope that we didn't get the conclusion of the symbiote thing in the last one, because we still haven't even seen some of these characters venomized um, that we've seen toys and things coming out for. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm, I'm a little worried that we're done with the symbiote stuff. And I, I hope not, but... I'm a little concerned that we might be. Um, so we'll see how this series goes. But this episode, I think the only link that might link it to symbiote stuff, if they bring symbiote stuff back, is that whoever found um, the seed or whatever it was at the end of episode three, like whoever found that, which some of us were thinking it's, uh, some people thought it was Dr. Kirk Connors. It does, I don't think it was Dr. Kirk Connors. Um, if you look at his outfit and then you look at the frame where the person's like kneeling down to pick up the seed at the end of episode three, it's not the same outfit. And normally in these animations, everybody wears the same clothes all the time. So I'm thinking it's probably Norman Osborn or somebody else. Uh, and they got the seed and they probably, you know, uh, Dr. Kirk Connors probably working for them on some level. So we'll see where that goes. So I think that's probably the only connection. Everything else in this episode, I thought was just kind of a waste of time. And we'll start with the, uh, you know, the, the, the hearing of Max Modell. When you structure a story, obviously, you have to look at, okay, what's the point of everything? Uh, and where do things go? So if you're going to start the episode and you're going to have this hearing, and you're going to have these board members, and you're going to have, uh, you know, Miles and, and Gwen and Anya, 
and Peter, he's like running around trying to get uh, more proof uh, that, you know, that Max is a good person. So he gets a video from uh, Otto Octavius, who hates Max, but he got a video from Octavius saying, you know what, I don't like Max, I don't like, you know, some of his methods, but he did save New York in a lot of ways, and he does foster, all, you know, uh, and nurture all these kids with really bright minds and pushes them towards success. And he goes, so on that level, he's a good teacher and he definitely cares about his fellow man. And that's coming from one of his harshest critics, which is Otto Octavius. So clearly not as harsh as Kirk Connors, who's speaking against Max, but you know, Otto Octavius turned in like a video saying like he supports Max and he wants Max to stay at Horizon Labs. And so that was big for the board to hear because they know that you know Octavius was not a fan of Max. So Peter brings that to the room and they're like, oh, okay, maybe we'll consider this. Then out of nowhere, Dr. Kirk Connor says, well, why are we going to trust Peter Parker? You know, he, this is, I'm going a little out of order here, but um, he basically says Peter Parker is Spider-Man. So like Spider-Man, he, you know, Peter gives the video evidence. It's not enough because Connors comes in and chimes in with something. So then Peter hears that the rhino's out there and he thinks it's their friend Alexi who was saved by Max Modell. He came up with the cure for the rhino disease. So, you know, uh, Spider-Man goes out to get Alexi and, you know, and so he captures the rhino brings him back to Horizon, cures him, and they find out it's actually not Alexi. Somebody else has been infected with rhino DNA or, you know, become the rhino. And so uh, so then Peter's like, crap, this what he, we were going to get him to testify for Max as, you know, someone who's literally been saved by Max. And so now that we can't have that, we got to go do something else. And I think uh, Spider-Man fights the Tinkerer for like one scene that was also just filler. Um, and then also Swarm comes in. Now Swarm is a really cool character from the comic books. Um, I I was introduced to him early on in reading Spider-Man, like early in the like, mid 90s. I think he popped up once or twice, maybe to fight Ben Riley or something. But he came, oh, that's right. Uh, it was, uh, it was. I think it was late 90s. I think I was introduced to Swarm uh, through the post-clone saga, like or when it was in the Ben Riley saga. And you had uh, Mike Rowingo drawing the book. And I think Ben had just died. Ben Riley had just died. Uh, or maybe he fought Swarm. I can't remember. Either him or Peter fought Swarm. But Mike Rowingo, I just remember him being the artist. And I loved his design for Swarm. It was literally just these bees. It was just all bees. He, you know, he didn't draw every little single bee. It was just like an orange mass that looked like bees. And you see stingers coming out here and there. And then there was like a purple hood with a, a cape. And it just looked amazing. This design for this cartoon for Swarm, I get it, you know, going for something different, but unless, you know, only in the scene where Peter like webs them and the web goes through them and, and causes bees to separate and then they come back together, that's the only way you know he's made of bees. He doesn't really, there's no like audio thing where he's like buzzing when he moves around. There is sometimes, but not like consistently. Uh, when he talks, there's not like a buzzy sound to his voice. And I get it, maybe that's, it's been done before and it's a little hammy or something. But to me, I'm just like, there was nothing about him that screamed Swarm. In fact, when he first shows up, even Peter says, hey, Prowler, is that you in a new costume? And I'm like, yeah, that's true. He does kind of look like the Prowler. Like, that's crazy. So, I don't know. To me, this I love Swarm. I think he's a great character, but he I didn't like the version of him in this show. And I also thought his whole purpose there was just a waste of time. It was like, the story is simple. Peter needs to, Peter and his friends need to prove Max Modell is innocent or, or deserves to keep his job. And Connors doesn't want that. That's your story. That could have been one episode, just one third, 20 minute episode. It could have been, but they stretched it out because they were like, we're going to bring in Alexi and we're going to set up Jackal and we're going to say Jackal's, you know, uh, tech has been used to create these other spider creatures that Swarm has and rhinos. So at the end of the episode, all the spider kids get uh, pulled together. Uh, they, you know, it, they, they have this moment where Peter goes in as Spider-Man back, you know, after he saves well, he, who he thought was Alexi, the rhino. He goes back to Horizon and he's like, all right, it's not Alexi. Let me just go into the room as Spider-Man and speak on Mac's behalf. So he goes in and he says, I'm Spider-Man and I believe in Max Modell. I've been working with them and all this stuff. And that's when Connors outs him and says, yep, yeah, but look under the mask. He's it's Peter Parker. So you're like, OK, how does he know that? So that's why I'm saying he has connections. He's working for somebody else, obviously. Um, and then so. Peter Parker's identity gets revealed in front of Anya, in front of Gwen. Um, obviously, Miles and Max already knew who he was. And then he had three board members just right there. So Peter takes off his mask and he's like, yep, I'm Peter Parker. He goes, but what I'm saying is, isn't is not true. He's like, you know, I Max has helped me save New York numerous times. And he goes, so I, and yes, 
he's made a mistake with this venom thing. And he goes, and it's his one mistake. We shouldn't, you know, uh, hold him, you know, too harshly for his one mistake, considering all the good he's done. And that's a good point. But, you know, the bad or the mistake he made did lead to an invasion on Earth and it led to people getting hurt and stuff. So I can see both points. It, it, so that's the interesting part. But they don't really do it because they make Connors this whiny, evil bad guy. So you're just like, OK, so you're just like not on Connor's side at all because he's clearly the bad guy. And you're just like, yeah, but that's that could be an interesting argument. And you, you could have done something a little bit more where you're like, who's, you know, who's really, you know, you could have delved into that a little bit more. I know it's a kid's cartoon. You're not really supposed to, you know, have that kind of stuff. But I feel like, you know, Batman the Animated Series and some other cartoons have. So I don't think it hurts either to have kind of that moral dilemma. Um, so anyway, I don't know. It was just so because of that, though, now Anya and Gwen know Peter Parker Spider-Man. So then for like 10 minutes of the episode, they just kind of give him the cold shoulder. Every time he asks for help, they're like, why? You don't you didn't trust us to you with your secret identity. You trusted Miles and Max Modell, but you didn't trust us. And he's like, come on, guys, like it's my secret identity. You know, like what the heck? Like and uh, and so I just thought that was kind of silly to kind of use that as the tension between the group. But then the whole group gets captured at the end by Swarm, and it turns out he's leading an underground uh, fight club with monsters. So he has the spider kids, and they're going to fight three rhinos and three mutated man spider people. And, uh, and that's, and that's kind of the ending of the episode is them fighting that. They beat Swarm, they beat the rhinos, they beat the spider people, and then they, I guess, come back to Horizon for the, the, final, the, the final part of the hearing. Um, and then at the end, uh, the board decides that because of, you know, some things Connor says and, and you know, Spider-Man being revealed, they decide that Max is not going to keep his job. And, uh, and then after that, Peter goes to see Max and Max says, Peter, stop fighting for me. Like, it's fine. I shouldn't be in charge of that school. I did, you know, I did make a big mistake. So he accepts this verdict. So if that's your conclusion... To me, what they should have done is they start the episode and they have the hearing and then maybe everyone gets to speak one time without all the drama of Peter having to go get Alexi and, you know, and Swarm and all that stuff. You could have had all that, have like a five minute scene or at the beginning or whatever, do your cold open where they all speak for Max and they try to get him, you know, um, to keep his job. And then the board, say, you know, and then Connor says something like against that and says, here's why he shouldn't have his job. And then you just had Max come up and say, everyone stop fighting. They're, you're all right. Like, yes, I have done some good. Yes, I have done some bad. Um, but both, you know, they don't, they kind of, you know, like I'm deciding for myself that I'm going to walk away from this school. Like, you know, it could be in better hands uh, with someone else. And so, you know, bring in a different person. You know, I don't recommend Connors. Maybe I recommend Otto Octavius to come in. You know, you know, if you want someone who didn't always see eye to eye with me, you can bring Octavius in and he can help run the school. Uh, but don't give it to Connors. That's just my vote. But I will gladly step down because I feel like I'm in the wrong here. That's all you had to do. If, the, if your conclusion was that he was going to accept being fired. And I understand they wanted all those nice moments where it's like Peter and Miles and saying like, oh, he's, you know, he's helped me through this and he helped me through this moment. And this, you know, I, I was at a crossroads at this point in my life. And, you know, I was, Peter's like, I was Spider-Man at this point and I needed help. And, you know, Max helped me. I get that they wanted all those moments in there. Like I said, could have been a 22 minute episode. You still could have threw in the Tinkerer fight or a Swarm fight, but doing the fight club thing and doing all that and the Alexi stuff and setting up Jackal, it's like, I'm like, well, I don't know, whatever, man. Like I, this episode just really bummed me out. Like when I was watching it, the, every like, you know, few minutes, I found myself just disconnecting a little bit more and more. I did like the Mary Jane moments. There were some really nice moments where Mary Jane's playing basketball and Peter Parker walks by and she gives him advice on how to talk to his friends. She gives him common sense advice that Peter should know himself, but that's always been the fun of Peter Parker is that sometimes he doesn't have that common sense. So, uh, so I kind of like that moment. And then at the end later, when he comes back at the end of the episode and he reconnects with her and they're playing basketball together um, and he thanks her for the advice, it was a sweet moment. So I like that because it was more Mary Jane, you know, so that was great getting Felicia Day back to do the voice. Um, and so those two scenes were great, but man, I'm like, I hate that we're four episodes into this six episode season. We've gotten two symbiote episodes. Venom died in the first one, yet the whole season's called Maximum Venom. We had Mary Jane introduced briefly in the second episode and then not touched on in the third episode. And then now has like one or two little scenes in the fourth episode. Just from a pacing standpoint, I'm like, you got all these elements here that could work. 
but I don't know, man. I can imagine the season was probably a headache to, to structure because it's six 40 minute episodes um, broken into two parts each episode. So I can understand that's not the, the typical normal way that they make this existing cartoon previous in previous seasons, but it doesn't seem that weird to me either to just do a bunch of, you know, two part episodes either. Like, I feel like, I feel like two part episodes have existed on TV for decades. So to me, to, to, it didn't seem, I don't know, it seems like it wouldn't have been that hard to structure this season um, where there's a little bit of symbiote stuff in every episode. And then you could have still done some of these other things and just spread them out so that there's symbiote stuff in every single episode so that they all tie together a little bit more clearly. And so that's what I feel. I feel like episode two and four, two I appreciated because I felt like, oh, it's setting up Peter as the leader and stuff. Um, so it had a purpose. Episode four, I don't feel like has a purpose. Maybe it'll come clearer to me when I watch five and six, but really I'm just like the Connor stuff, if he does connect to the next big threat that's gonna end the season, you could have still put that in here and just crammed the hearing thing into like one episode or half of an episode and you could have moved on and you could have just had Max, because obviously at some point Max is gonna come back and say, oh, you know what? I am gonna step up again and help you guys despite being fired or whatever. You still could do that if he would have just walked away from the hearing. Like, hey, I love what you said about me, Peter, Miles, Gwen, Anya. It meant so much. Your words meant to me. And Dr. Connors, I know you don't like me. And, you know, I think you made a mistake coming into my lab. And that's why we're all here is because your mistake and my mistake caused this big mistake. So I don't think you should be in charge of the lab and I shouldn't be in charge of the lab. So I'm, I'm pleading with the board, you know, fire us both and bring in someone else. Bring in like a, you know, a Octavius or something. To me, that's just like, I don't know, like Max Mandel's a smart guy. And I just felt like if at the end of the episode, he was just going to accept his punishment, then he should have presented the punishment earlier in the episode and accepted it then. And then you could have gone on your Spider-Man adventure after that. Um, and then brought Max back again at the end with Peter going, you know, why did you quit? Why did you give up? You know, we're not supposed to give up. We have to fight, you know, for a better tomorrow and stuff. And, you know, and maybe Max says something to him that, you know, kind of deflates Peter's... Um, belief a little bit in 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 the, in the greater good and maybe that could be the thing that this episode was about was hurting peter's spirit just enough so that way when he gets attacked in the next two episodes from whatever villains he faces because i'm not even convinced that they're going to be symbiotes at this point but whatever he faces next like he he's a little bit more down than he normally would be and then he has to build himself back up and that would give a purpose to this episode so I don't know. That's my long kind of rant on this episode uh, for for Maximum Venom. I I gotta say this season this is the weakest episode, which is a bummer because I thought it had elements there to be a solid episode. The hearing thing, I think if you crush that in and just had Max choose his fate at the beginning, that could have been better. Obviously, I know they need Connors. You know the writers need Connors in place as the head of the school for whatever comes next. So I get that. You could have had Max still plead with them to not have Connors. And then the board could have said, well, well, you know what? We hear what you say, you're resigning. Connors, you're gonna be here temporarily and then until we can find a replacement. And then you could, that way Connors is still in place until they bring in someone else. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. And then at the end they have like the board people, one of the board ladies, uh, Peter kind of befriends her and she comes up to him and says, hey, look, because we all signed uh, agreements with the school, none of us can share your secret identity. And I'm just like, I'm like, I don't know about the other two board. This lady sounds like she's a, a normal person, but the other two board members, one guy was like, yay, like cheering during some of the hearings about certain jokes and dumb things that were being made. So I don't trust that guy knowing Peter Parker, Spider-Man. <laughs> like I wouldn't trust that guy with my secret identity. And that was the thing is like, it was very unlike Peter Parker. Like I know Peter Parker unmasked himself in the comics, but he was kind of goaded to do that by Iron Man and sworn, you know, his family was going to be protected, which, you know, obviously we found out uh, Aunt May still got shot, but, you know, uh, so it, it, I don't know, to me, it's like, it seemed like a very silly episode that didn't fit the overall story or arc. And, it, and I, I cannot at this moment find a purpose in this episode other than, oh, we just needed Max Modell to leave and Connors be in his place at the school, which I'm like, you didn't need 44 minutes to do that, in my opinion. Shouldn't we get be getting back into the symbiote stuff? And I'm thinking we're not gonna. I, I, I honestly, I, I'm I'm divided because I a part of me really believes that episode three 
was just the ending of the symbiote stuff. Like, because I think in that episode we saw Iron Man and Iron Heart. I was trying to think of all the characters. There's a uh, Amadeus Cho Hulk is um or the totally awesome Hulk. He's like a symbiote in that one. I think Cap was a symbiote in one scene in that one. So maybe we did get all the toy characters in that episode. So maybe we're done with symbiotes, which I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. I guess I just, in my head, maybe it's unfair to the creators of the show, but I, I think in my head when I heard season three, Maximum Venom, like, you know, six one-hour episodes, I guess I just thought, wow, that's going to be six one-hour symbiote-related episodes. And so maybe that was unfair to, to assume that because I think in previous shows and previous uh, seasons, they would be like, all right, it's the, you know, it's a superior Spider-Man, but that only lasted five episodes. It wasn't the full season. But then again, they didn't call season two superior Spider-Man, you know, like they're calling this one Maximum Venom. So it's, it's, it's hard. So I, a part of me really thinks that episode three was the finale and, uh, and that these next three episodes, I, and I don't, I still don't know if this is the last season or not. I think it might be the last season of the show, but I have no idea. I can't confirm that. I have no idea. But if it is the last show, then I guess it makes sense that they would want these last three episodes to wrap up other non-symbiote stories that they had already set up in previous seasons, like Jackal and, you know, and Norman Osborn. And maybe there's things like that. Maybe, who knows? Maybe Norman Osborn will become Red Goblin. Maybe that'll be the big finale or something. Um, who knows what's going to happen? I have no idea. But it's, it's, I guess that makes sense. Like if they're like, hey, we got three episodes, three episodes focused on Venom. Three episodes we can wrap up all the loose threads and introduce them to Mary Jane and maybe have them have a happy ending at the end of the season. Um, that could be the goal of where they're going with this. And if that's the goal, that's fine. It just didn't come across that way when they announced season three, Maximum Venom, you know. So uh, so we'll see. We'll see where episodes five and six go. I hope I like the, those episodes, whether they have symbiotes in them or not. I hope I like those episodes more than I like this episode. This episode was... Uh, you know, it was just my least favorite episode of the show. Um, probably out of all the seasons, like all three seasons, I think this might have been my least favorite uh, out of all three seasons. Um, and that's not being hy hyperbolic or anything. I really am just like struggling to understand the point of this show and why it had to be dragged out for so long. It's like uh, my review of Transformers on Netflix. The first episode was like, it was like a retelling of the first five minutes of the original G1 cartoon, but they stretched it out to 22 episodes or 22 minutes. And I'm just like, God, that, it was really boring to watch that first episode of Netflix Transformers. It was really, luckily the show looked amazing, but from a writing and story standpoint and character standpoint, it was really boring. And that's how I felt this time. I felt like this was a filler episode that they dragged out into two filler episodes and gave them all to us at once. And it's like, uh, so hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully there's threads in this that pay off in episodes five and six and make it all worth it. But for now, that's my thoughts, my honest thoughts of episode four of Max and Venom. And I've talked long enough. I've talked as long as almost like, you know, two episodes in length. So I uh, might as well have done a commentary track. But you guys let me know what you think. You know, what did you think of episode four of Maximum Venom? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me on stuff? Disagree with me? Whatever it is, let me know. And, and you know, like I said, I mean, I love Kevin Burke. I love Doc Y. They're awesome guys. And they provided so much for this channel um, as far as like interviews and just being in friendship just in general. Like they're really nice guys. And I, I, I hate, I always feel like, because I've done this before in the past where it's like, you know, I, I know friends in the industry. I have, you know, people that I have connections to that make awesome stuff. And, um, and then I, I'll review some of their stuff. I'm always honest though. Like that's the thing is I always have to fall back on honesty because it's just how I feel and it shouldn't hurt anyone's feelings. Um, so I hope my opinions here didn't hurt their feelings. Like I think they're awesome and talented guys. And I think the people who they hire to work on these shows are amazing and awesome people. And I want long careers in cartoons and other things for all of them for sure. Uh, but this just didn't jive with me personally. I just, I think I just, and like I said, maybe it could be an unfair thing too, to, to be fair to them. Um, cause I know this was a mainly negative episode, but to be fair to them, maybe it's because I had this preconception of the, sh the series being all symbiote episodes. Like I, that's what I thought in my head and maybe that's unfair to do and, 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 uh, you know, and, you know, expect of them. And we always talk about tempering expectations like we try to do that really well with the Venom movie and I think we did a really good job of tempering uh, the tone and stuff so that when most of us went into the movie the movie we were talking about that was being made at, ended up being the movie that was made and we all kind of got our enjoyment out of the Venom movie so maybe it was unfair to um, have the wrong expectations for this show but I, I just ba went based off of the information the little information that was out there and uh, and 
you know, and here we are. So, uh, so yeah, I'm sorry I made a negative uh, review and discussion. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of feedback I can get for this one, good and bad. So let it all be known down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. And I hope episodes five and six, whether they have symbiotes in them or not, like I said, I hope I have really positive things to say about those ones. I hope, you know, that this was just like a, a, a minor misstep in my opinion. And then I hope this, the series ends or the, the, the season ends very strong because that's what I want. I, you know, Spider-Man deserves it. The fans deserve it. You know, the, the people who work so hard on the show uh, deserve to go out on a big bang, uh, you know, so I hope that's what happens. And, uh, and we'll get those reviews up when those episodes come out. So again, let me know what you think down below. And we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.